Hey, race fans, Alex Weaver here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and boy, do I have a treat for you guys today. Uh, if you haven't seen on NASCAR's channels, we've been breaking down some classic race replays, and two of my personal favorites are on the dock now that we're going to talk about. It's the 1997 spring race at Bristol Motor Speedway and the 2002 night race at Bristol Motor Speedway. Two common denominators in this at the finish of it was Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. I'm now going to welcome in those two Hall of Famers to talk about the ends of those races and what was going through their minds and how their friendship is today. So let's welcome in NASCAR Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace and NASCAR Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon. Hey, how are you guys doing? Alex, Alex, hold on. I have been waiting for this show for <laughs> so long. So thank you guys at NASCAR for making this happen. Thank you, Rusty, for, for coming on. This is going to be a blast. I can't wait to relive this. All right. Well, Rusty, do you feel the same way? Because I know that it ended in a different, uh, different light for you. It was a little less positive than Gordon over there. Yeah, he, Jeff, he got the good end of both of those years. There's no doubt about that. But they, you know, look, we those were two uh, incredible races. I I went back yesterday and kind of looked at it because I actually forgot about them. I mean, I never forgot about it, but I, I had to kind of look at the time frame, what happened, and I tell you what I saw was two pretty equal cars throughout those two uh, 500 lap races, and uh, and there was a lot of drama, a ton of drama. Now, I know that both of you are joining me from your home offices in North Carolina because we're in a little bit of a different scenario now. So what have the weeks in these past weeks look like for you guys? You know, I don't know about for, for Rusty, but for me, um, you know, this is right in the middle of the season for Fox and, and their broadcast. And, and so not having the races to go to. I went to Atlanta and I'm there ready to, to start the race weekend and then everything, you know, gets postponed and. You know, since then, it's just been a whirlwind. It's, uh, you know, just unknowns about, um, you know, what's happening in racing, what's happening uh, with, with um, you know, trying to stay healthy and, and this thing spreading, as well as now, uh, you know, my kids are at home homeschooling. My wife's become a third grade teacher. I'm, I, I've been become the cook. <laughs> really <laughs> food. Um, it's been pretty crazy. But the, the positive is that we have had some eye racing that's been pretty spectacular and fun to watch and be a part of. Yeah, and for me, I've been uh, I've been up here at my race shop a little bit at home most of the time. But uh, I just got back from Daytona Beach. I've been down there for eight days for uh, Bike Week for Daytona. We took a lot of motorcycles down there. Had a great time. Rode hundreds of miles, and and we're building a lot of real custom motorcycles right now. And I'm having fun with that. And uh, my son's uh, Steve's doing most of that work, but I've been doing that. But I'm kind of like Jeff right now. I've Turned in a pretty, it turned into a pretty decent cook, and I've been cooking most of the dinners at home, and we haven't went out or had takeout in a long time. Uh, and we all join time at home. I mean, I'm starting to really refine my skills, but I'm like Jeff. When I heard about this, I went, "Oh, this is going to be good." <laughs> I got to tell you, for a long time we didn't get along too well, and uh, we're pretty darn good friends right now. And I'm glad it ended that way because uh, we can all look back now as Hall of Famers and say. You know, that 97 Bristol race was unreal. And I think uh, the bump and run that Jeff did on me in the 97 race was that created the term, the bump and run. <laughs> and uh, he's the one that started that. And that's cool. And uh, But now it's expected that if you get close now to anybody out there and you're within distance to win a big race, the bump and run's acceptable. Well, that is a skill that I thought I would never hear to NASCAR Hall of Famers pick up during this time is cooking. But now back to the scoreboard, because I know that these two races that we're talking about today have Jeff on the positive side and getting two wins in that column for him. But Rusty, you lead with nine at Bristol and Jeff, you have five. So how special is Bristol Motor Speedway for you guys and for the sport of NASCAR? Well, and let me start off on, on this. And, and this is why those wins were so special for me, because Rusty was the king. I mean, th this guy... You would go to short tracks and, and he would dominate them. You would just sit there, you know, pulling your hair out, trying to figure out in practice how to pick up, you know, a, a few tenths of a second because Rusty's just, you know, destroying the competition in practice and qualifying in the race. And, and so for me, you know, I won a championship in 95 and 97. Um, you know, I, I just I, I wanted to win not just at Bristol, but I wanted to win against Rusty because he set the benchmark. So, you know, this was a defining moment in, in, in you know, my career. Uh, and, and so when I saw that opportunity, of course, I had a lot of confidence at this time because we were winning a lot of races and, and winning championships. But when it came to going to, uh, to uh, Bristol, 
and and you were going to win, you had to beat Rusty Wallace. And, um, you know, that's what made 97 so special for me. I, I didn't necessarily want to go about it with the bump and run, but that's just the way it unfolded. And I went for it. And uh, the crowd went wild. I mean, we know what, you know, the, the unique thing about all this is that, you know, Rusty was a, the type of guy that not only was a fierce competitor and, and you know, just, just, you know, a great all-around personality for the sport, but he knew um, because of his battles with Earnhardt what those fans meant to NASCAR. And so this night was one of those things where everything collided, uh, including our bumpers. <laughs> and even though maybe Rusty didn't like the, the results, and I did, I think we both knew, or at least now later, after we've had a few glasses of wine and been able to, <laughs> to connect and, and, and hang out, we realized that that was a huge moment for the sport. It was uh, it was an incredible race 158,000 people in the grandstands everybody standing up going crazy I grabbed the pole for that race and uh, so I started off leading led a ton of laps and realized pretty quickly that Jeff was the guy that was the one I was going to have to battle because he was so strong and longer runs especially my car would get going real early and take off and but he would uh, him and Ray Abraham had that baby set up where it could make some speed in the long run it would hold the speed and uh, and so he got up on me about every time I get in traffic he was right on me and I try to clear him a little bit and I'd get four or five car links on him and then he'd get me again and I tried all I could. And then uh, we're down to, what was it, Jeff? Four or five laps, I think. And now he's all over me. And then it's where I'm trying to, instead of arc the entry, really hold the car out and bring it down the bottom. I'm, I'm really chopping the corners now so I can try to keep him trapped behind me. And that was even making it worse because then that wasn't the fastest way around the racetrack and it let him get right up on me. But I was driving real defensively at that point. And then we, uh, there we are. And we led the most laps that day, grabbed the pole. We get one lap to go or two laps to go. And I get the bump and Jeff goes on and wins. And I was so passionate about that doggone race losing it uh, that late into it. And I got to tell you back then the bump and run was something we never heard of. And it really didn't happen that much. Or if at all, like back then we just call it rough driving, you know, but um, it happened and I could not get it out of my mind. And uh, after it happened, it was stuck in my mind for a long, long time. I just couldn't get over it. I couldn't forgive. I was just mad, man. I was just mad and I wanted that thing. And I love Bristol all my car dealerships, we've got eight of them now. They're all up in Bristol, Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee area. And so that's a really special area for me. So to, to do all that stuff and lose it right there at the very end, I, I was one mad hombre, man. I'll tell you what, I was, I was not under the collar at him, boy, no doubt about that. All right, let me tell my side now. Okay, please. <laughs> uh, no, no doubt. I mean, I think, you know, what Rusty said about, you know, having a fast race car all day long, dominating, leading the laps, won the pole. Um the one thing that we did have in our back pocket that day, as Rusty mentioned, was the long runs. And we, throughout that race, and remember, this is the Bristol of the old, where you ran right around the bottom. You had to, you hook these little pieces of the apron where it came up onto the onto the track, and you would hook that. And the guys that did it well, uh, I mean, Rusty, you know, he, he worked so hard on, on not only that line of hooking those areas to make that car turn, he also worked really hard on his race car and, and the geometry to get that car to turn really good to the middle. And, and so on the long runs, not only was I learning, you know, from him watching, but my car just wouldn't take off. It, you know, guys would pass me in the early part of a run, but we had one or two really long runs as we were closing down to the end of this race that I saw where Rusty's car, the back started sliding out a little bit on the exit, you know, and this is where my car really started to come in good. But we just never got to that point where I could actually get to him and, and, and try to pass him. This final run, though, was one of the longest runs of the day. And, and when we um, got to the end, we got into some lap traffic. And in that bottom lane, man, if that lap traffic didn't give you a lot of space, then you were going to be in, in, you know, caught behind them. And so, really, I don't think if it hadn't been for lap traffic, I don't think I'd catch Rusty that day. As good as my car was on the long runs, his car was so good the first half of the run, he, he could just check out. But lap traffic played such an important role that as we got down to the end and there weren't any cautions, um, you know, I saw his car getting loose. My car was good. He caught lap traffic. They fought him a little bit and boom, I'm right up on him. So we came off of turn uh, two and I got a run and I went to the inside, but it did, wasn't quite there. And Rusty came down, like you said, start running that, that uh, you know, shallow entry to sort of block me. 
And I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to give him that one. But as we got closer to the white flag, I said, next time if I get a run like that, I'm not checking up. And that's exactly what happened. You know, I got a good run off of two. I, I got to the inside of him. He ran me low. And I just, you know, boom, just put the bumper, you know, to him. Gordon takes a look again. Rusty comes down, slams the door. Gordon on here. Here comes Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Gordon takes the lead. Rusty slams. Jeff Gordon will win. Slid him up the racetrack and went on by, and, you know, we end up winning the race. And um, I was just glad he didn't wreck because I thought, okay, well, at least I just pushed him out of the way. I didn't wreck him. And, uh, you know, I thought at that point, hey, this is Bristol. This is fair game. Uh, but, of course, it built this rivalry that maybe was already there a little bit between me and Rusty, and it certainly expanded it and among our race fans. The, the rivalry said uh, that might have already been there. It, it probably was. And, you know, as I mature and get over that and retired now, and I think back, and we're, we're good friends right now. <laughs> Look, I was just flat jealous of Jeff. I was. I was tired of it. I mean, he, I, me and Earnhardt were winning all these races, and we, both of us were kind of doing all comes. All of a sudden, here comes this new guy in, and he's kicking our butt on a regular basis, and it's getting old. And, and then when I got my butt kicked at Bristol by him in the tap, that kind of set me over the edge right there. Now, they say that drivers have the best memory and never forget past history. So let's set the scene of five years later in the 2002 Bristol night race. Uh, tempers tend to be a little more heated when it's nighttime at the last great Coliseum. Jeff, you had 31 races without a win. Rusty, you were going on 49 races. So was it just about getting that win for you guys or was it about beating each other at Bristol? This is where it's it, this race becomes very interesting because, you know, I mean, we were dominating in those late 90s, and now we move into 2002. Yeah, I won the championship in 01, but wasn't having a great you know, season in, in 2002. I'd never won the night race at Bristol before. Rusty certainly had. I never had. Um, so both of us were on sort of these winless streaks where we were trying to break that. And then on top of that, I was trying to win my first night race at Bristol. And it just so happened that, again, it comes down to – you know, the short track, Bristol King, Rusty Wallace, and myself. Rusty Wallace's last win was at the California Speedway in April of 2001. Jeff Gordon's last victory was at the Kansas Speedway in September of 2001. Both races were very, very similar. Qualified real well, led a ton of laps. And then right there at the end, uh, getting prepared for this interview, I was watching that particular race yesterday and we ran forever. Uh, Jeff would get like three car lengths to me or maybe two car lengths up to me, uh, my rear bumper. I'd pull like six away. And that went on for a long, long time. And I'm thinking, man, he's so good again. <laughs> the car is so strong. I can't shake him, you know. It kind of got me messed up in that particular race. I, I ran up on, on lap cars. And when I ran up on lap cars, uh, I started losing the front end a little bit. And when I started losing the front end, it let Jeff get right to me. And basically the same thing happened again. I come off a of turn two and lit the rear tires up and it let him get right up on my bumper and he gets down in there and does the bump and run again. Here comes Gordon right up to the bumper again. Did you hear that wheel spin, Benny? Yeah, I did hear that wheel spin. <laughs> the bump and run. There it is. Gordon underneath to the lead. So time has went by and now the bump and run has became more acceptable. And uh, so it, it didn't sting as bad for me in 02 as 97 did. Yeah, and, and as far from my standpoint, it was, oh, I've seen this play out before, and it played out in my favor. So, you know, if I could do it once, I can do it again. If I got uh, away with it then, why can't I get away with it this time? And and so I didn't even think twice about it. The first time, I'll be honest, you know, uh, you know, we're talking about 1997. I, I you know, Rusty and, and and Earnhardt and these guys. I mean, I looked up to them. You know, I, I respected them so much. Uh, and, and so to me in 97, I was a little hesitant. I didn't want to do it this way, but I, you know, the, the, the competitor in me just went for it in 2002. I was like, yep, no doubt about it. <laughs> the funny part was after the race was over, they said, Hey, Rusty, what do you think of that? And I said, I was trying desperately to knock it out of him. I just couldn't catch him, <laughs> but I couldn't catch him. <laughs> yeah. That was the key too. You know, is that those happened so late. In, in the race that, um, yeah. you know, you, you, if you're going to do that, you better make sure that you get away from him. Cause I, it's the first thing that's going through my mind is did I get him good? And I don't want to wreck him, but I hope I pushed him up enough that I gapped ourselves where he can't get back to me because it wasn't going to end well for me. If he got back <laughs> to me, 
It wasn't going to be a bump and run. So we've talked about this rivalry on track, but throughout this whole thing, you guys have mentioned that you're now actually friends. It's unbelievable how, you know, the, our relationship has grown over the years and, and he will, Rusty will agree to this. We, we give uh, probably Ray Evernham and, and Ron Pratt a lot of credit for this. Uh, these are two great buddies of ours. Of course, Ray, you know, be my crew chief, but we're, we're still, you know, just great friends. But um, we get to go out into the dunes in the desert um, or around Barrett Jackson every year. And, and the, I remember the first year, and I, you know, Rusty and I, I mean, I, I always respected him. But at the same time, I realized, you know, that we we're fierce competitors. So we never really had uh, enough time. We would see each other at events, but never really dive deep into this. But out at Ron Pratt's, we were able to go out there and be in a relaxed atmosphere, um, just, just, just you know, a bunch of guys having fun, getting out in the dunes and, and tearing it up. And, and you know what? The, the first day that I remember doing this is I remember seeing Rusty in this sand dune car doing wheelies and going over these jumps and stuff. And I was like, you know what? That guy is still a badass driver. And he always has been, always has, you know, and, and, and always will be way at the top of the list, uh, you know, when it comes to guys I competed against. And I think that broke the ice because then I started talking to Rusty about, man, dude, that was impressive what you did out there. And it just sort of broke the ice and we, and we just started talking. And of, of course, you know, as guys get together and racers get together, you start hashing and, and, you know, rehashing and talking about the past. And of course, Bristol got brought up and, and we just dove into it, you know, and, and, and we did it in a respectful, fun way. And man, we would, no, that's not how it went. This is what happened. And, then, and and at the end of it, man, we're, you know, arms around one another laughing about it. And, and it, it honestly, I, I think back over the years and, and those moments on track and now where we're at um, are some, some of just, you know, iconic moments, not just on the racetrack, but off the racetrack for me personally. And he's got these. 800 pound sand rails, 800 horsepower sand rails that are run 140 miles an hour. And we run them about anywhere between 100 and 120 miles an hour. Most of the time coming back to what Jeff and I call the, the sand highway. We had a lot of fun doing that, but you know, we've got a lot of cool drivers with us too. And I agree with him. I think that this doggone deal that Ron Pratt puts on has been like race car driver therapy. <laughs> You didn't like this guy. You didn't like that guy. You bring them all on. And now you got Don Perdomas there. Tony Stewart's there. We had Kyle Busch with us this year. Uh, Greg Biffle. A, a lot of guys. And we all get along. And we're not trying to one-up each other. We all were successful in our fields at whatever given time. But, man, we're just having a blast. And you know what? We're not playing around. We're on the gas pretty doggone hard. We had John Hillary with us this year, the football player. Uh, it, this is a really big time deal, but it, it's took all our relationships and made them a lot closer. And I think made us respect each other a lot more. And it's taught me how to drink wine better. <laughs> uh, Jeff is the leader in the wine uh, field and uh, he made really, really good wine. I drank all the wine he brought and, uh, and I still continue to do that. Now, now the, the one thing that, you know, we finally got to the bottom of on one of these trips and uh, and this is what he and I laugh about that we talk about now is we finally got him to admit that he dumped me and wrecked me at Richmond, that that was that was payback. Now, of course, as you guys know, as soon as we came onto this video chat when, before we started this show, he's like, wait a minute. I forgot about that <laughs> second bump and run. I still owe you. So I have to <laughs> until we got get out in the dunes. I might have to look over my shoulder and see if Rusty's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, I I wouldn't hurt you, man. There's no doubt. About that. <laughs> you know, like, like, he wasn't I, thinking about that that one day in Richmond when we went into Turn One. I can tell you that. Yeah, 1997. You know, when we had the very first bump and run, and I told you earlier in, the, in our interview here that it really bothered me a long time. I just couldn't get over it. We get to Richmond in the race, late in the race. I, I see an opportunity, so I I wreck him. I start to try to wall destroy him. I mean, he's got nothing left. His junk is tore up. And um, and so I, I went through and looked down. I said, Jeff, do you know that that our, our first deal was in 1997? I didn't do the payback. 1998, that was over a year I waited. And so that's how much it bothered me. I remember I got into Earnhardt in practice the week later at, uh, at, at Michigan. 
and uh, we're practicing before the big race. And I slide and I hit Earnhardt and Earnhardt comes flying down. He said, you might've pulled that off on, er on Gordon, but you're not going to get away with me. And man, he was mad. And we were going at it in the infield. Oh, it was a mess. But anyway, that's, a, that's how important that deal was and how dramatic the 97, 98 seasons were. Yeah. And Alex, so you, you, you said it best though, right? Drivers don't forget. You know, you can forget a lot uh, of these these details within a race. How how did I get here? Where did I finish? But when when it comes to bumping runs and getting wrecked and winning, you know, big races, you never forget those things. Man, to be a fly on the wall down at the Sand Highways, because that's where it sounds like the party's at. Well, Alex, I, I got to tell you, and because because if I don't, Rusty probably will. Or he, you know what? The, the relationship we have right now, he probably would be respectful and not tell us. So I'll tell it. And and so we had Boyer out there. He he talked about <laughs> oh no, so and what the one common denominator that I've, I've I've come to realize is that I've had a conflict with every one of these guys. Over the <laughs> <laughs> well, NASCAR has done quite a few of these classic race replays, and I've noticed at the end that the common denominator is always somebody versus Gordon. So it's nice to see that they actually end well and that the drivers can remain friends. But fans, these races are on all of NASCAR's channels that you can go back and watch these two Hall of Famers uh, and NASCAR champions battle it out at the 1997 Spring Race of Bristol Motor Speedway and the 2002 Night Race. Uh, you guys, thank you both for joining us. This has been so fun for me. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. That was so much fun.